Hey guys, it's Kyle Cook from Summer House and Winter House on the Hollywood Raw podcast, talking all things TV, lover boy, my wedding to Amanda, um, and all the awkward moments that you just don't get the scoop on uh, if you're just watching the show. So tune in. Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. My name is Adam Glenn, joined by my uh, my friend Dax Holt. How are you? For, how are you? Uh, sir? I'm good, man. It's a good day. I'm excited for our guest. I feel like we have been trying to get Kyle from Summer House for like a year now, and it's there's just been so many hurdles to jump through. You know, he is busy as hell. Finally, it is happening. Today is the day, and I know that you are his biggest fan, so I'm excited for you as well. Yeah, it's funny. I was DMing him to, for years to come on the podcast, got no response. So then I started filming homeless people and crazy people fighting on the streets <laughs> of New York City and asking them about Summer House and asking about Kyle, and he got wind of it and you know saw it and responded. He's like, this is hilarious. Loved it. Hilarious. <laughs> We love the videos. And then we just start talking. I was like, you got to come on the podcast, man. And I threatened him. I said, listen, if you don't come on the podcast, I will start drinking Trulies and start watching uh, Shots of Sunset. <laughs> so it's your choice. And he said, okay, we'll finally come on the podcast. I'll talk lover boy and everything. So I'm really excited to talk to him, ask him like fanboy all about Summer House because you know I'm obsessed with the show. You are. Um, before we get to him, we read your reviews live on air. Best thing to do to support this podcast is give us a review. Say five stars. Say a few kind words. We'll actually read one of your reviews live on air. It helps out with the algorithm. Dax, do you have a review ready? I got a review. This one uh, comes from, let's see, Victoria27S. What? Why are you laughing? Read it. Uh, it says a must listen to for celeb fans. Five stars. I am so happy to support the number one anti child trafficking, anti air pollution podcast. <laughs> Dax and Adam are great hosts asking questions we actually want answers to, aka the risque ones. Uh, really interesting insight into the behind the scenes of celebrity culture. Keep it up, dudes. Victoria. <laughs> That's when you know you have a true fan listening to this podcast because you're repeating all the dumb shit that you say about this podcast. It's awesome. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Victoria. We are the <laughs> number one anti trial <laughs> 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 We're the number one anti child trafficking entertainment <laughs> news podcast out there. We're the number one anti air pollution celebrity news podcast out there. <laughs> I don't know how we could even listen to another podcast after. If you do, if you you're, actually just decide to listen to another podcast, you're promoting child trafficking. That's not <laughs> you're you're so dumb. <laughs> so dumb. Oh, Victoria, thank you for making our morning here. Before even getting Kyle on. All right, let's get to him. We got Kyle Cook coming on. You guys know him from Summer House and Winter House on Bravo. He is a huge deal, and he also happens to be uh adam's celebrity crush kyle welcome kyle it's finally happened you are on the hollywood raw podcast i've been talking about you i'm your biggest fan i run the the fake bots of kyle on instagram not the <laughs> that's me who runs them how are you my friend i'm excellent um yeah thanks for the the patience and persistence it's uh it's a pleasure and an honor I've been DMing this guy. I even asked all the celebrities on the street about Kyle from Summer House and what do they think about him. Uh, if you if you follow me on Instagram, I'll see like crazy people fighting on the street, and I ask them about Bravo Summer House. Do you have you seen my videos? Absolutely. I think that's what put me or put you on my radar. I'm like, this is absolutely hysterical. I'm like, is this guy for real? And then I'm like, you know, then I looked at your Instagram page, and I'm like, all right, all right, this guy like. He's a content creator. He gets it. <laughs> for, for, for someone who hasn't seen it, like there will literally be a brawl in the middle of New York. People are throwing punches and Adam stops a mid punch. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I need to ask you guys, what do you think of the season of Summer House? <laughs> and they like stop punching and they're like, what the fuck? And it throws people <laughs> off every time. And it is so funny. 
He's like the peacemaker. I honestly think it helps out a little bit because it breaks up like the craziness going on in their head and they're like, wait, what is going on? And then they realize they're being crazy punching each other. So I feel like it slows it down just a little bit. But or, or you'll ask like a celebrity that's way bigger than me on a whole different planet about like, you know, my wedding or something. And they're like, huh? <laughs> Dude, it's so funny. I saw Jeff Bezos two weeks ago and I asked him a serious question and I didn't think, you know, I actually, I asked him a nice question and I thought he would maybe answer. He didn't answer. And I'm so pissed because if he, if I knew he wasn't going to answer, answer, I would have, I was definitely going to bring up your name and say, Hey, you know, what do you think? Is Kyle bringing too much lover boy on, you know, summer house this season or is he doing just enough as for marketing purposes and get him to start talking about you? Like how great Jeff Bezos talking about lover boy and yourself. That, I mean, look, I, I, it's a small world. His brother um, helps run a investment fund. And one of the partners there actually came inbound to talk about Loverboy. So wow. maybe he would have responded if you mentioned Loverboy. <laughs> no, to self, Loverboy. It's so, it's, dude, you're, so you actually, I got to give you a lot of credit, you know, because I think you're so good at promoting Loverboy. Loverboy is the business you're involved in. And, you know, you're always drinking on the show. Are you very strategic before season as far as making sure the lover boy is seen on the show? Well, I can't, you know, actually do things to make sure it's, it's seen, but what I try to do, I mean, look, there's a lot of celebrities that have quote unquote brands. I'm one of the few actually building it brick by brick. I'm building it from the ground up. And I, I knew like our show was supposed to be a work hard, play hard show. And like, what grounds housewives, like their friendships, their husbands, their families? What grounds a show about working professionals? Well, back in the early days, it was our work. So I, I knew there would be an opportunity to kind of talk about what I do for a living because that's what I was doing those first couple seasons. I saw an opportunity because nobody wanted to hear about my nutrition app, which is what I was working on, you know, back in the day. They wanted to know what I was drinking. So I had to kind of just like, all right. You know, like the opportunity was staring me in the face. No, I mean, that's it's really smart. I think it, we, we, we've seen this with a couple, you know, big reality stars, Bethany Frankel, and, and just to name some. But sure. I think it's so smart to incorporate your own personal business into a television show because it's just like free publicity. Does does Bravo ever ask you, though, to like turn it down a notch? Like they feel like, oh, the, there's too much publicity here. Oh, yeah. I mean, people thought like, you know. Bravo must be in cahoots with me when in fact my producers like Kyle, uh, take the lover boy sweatshirt off, please. <laughs> you know, um, how many drinks does it take you to get drunk? Would you say? Oh, I, I think COVID turned me into a lightweight, to be honest. Um, yeah. I mean, back, back when I was super social in New York city, going out three, four times a week, I had a way higher tolerance, but I mean like four or five lover boys, I'm, I'm feeling, you know, nice and talkative and, course the you know where the night goes from there is anyone's best guess <laughs> so on a recent you know you recently talked about this this lawsuit that was going on with loverboy are we able to talk about that yeah i can i can touch on the the high level you know so, so specifics there's actually been several i mean so, look, when so you, where where are you at with the one that you kind of got like emotional about on the show? And you were saying, look, like this is literally taking me into to debt here, having this lawsuit out. Where are you at with that whole thing? So I settled it. Thank God. Um, you know, look, uh, one of my very first distributors, um, you know, was uh, was in Massachusetts. And, you know, we had created a, a flexible contract. Um, and I mean, this is all public. We, we uh, more or less had to sue because, um, you know, they weren't necessarily honoring it. There was some confusion. I'm not going to, like, try to go into the blame game here. But, I mean, it, at one point it was costing me fifty, sixty, seventy-five thousand dollars $75,000 a month. Um, and, you know, that is just, like, an insane amount of money to – to try to resolve something that should have never been a dispute in the first place. And it's kind of like this rude slap in the face, like, Hey, welcome to, you know, uh, building a company and, and kind of passing that, you know, that small business size and kind of getting into the big leagues. I mean, now, I mean, next thing you know, I had 
a bar called lover boy try to sue me from a trademark perspective and i'm like um okay you know that that's an interesting take like uh you know that was another one of those things where they just they just wanted money um palm like wonderful palm i mean this never resulted in a lawsuit but i'm just going to give you an example of where you know you just you you wouldn't believe that the, the you know we, we called something one of our flavors um hibiscus palm and they kindly said oh we have that trademark and meanwhile i had like hundreds of thousands of dollars of packaging already printed and i had to change it to hibiscus lime and now people are like looking at my packaging being like oh my god did they change the formula um and that's a sign I mean, of success kyle when everyone's yeah. coming after you it's a sign of success are you happy with the outcome of that settlement or do you feel good about it yeah look like we we reached a mutual settlement the the, the you know the big one um and it was just a, a huge relief. Uh, I got, I was able to put that in my rear view post filming, but before my wedding. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, it was just this huge sigh of relief just because like, that's just the worst use of, of capital when you're trying to expand, you know, you mentioned on the show, uh, that you were in debt and you got emotional about it. Are you, you know, and, but that was filmed a year ago right now the, as a business and don't get me wrong. It, any business is always, especially as a new business is in debt. So it's nothing bad. It's just part of starting a new business. Are you still in debt? Yeah. You know, so that we took out a, a small business loan to the tune of like $4.2 million. Oh, small and one. the way uh, a small business loan, loan works. Yes. Loverboy is a corporation and it has that corporate veil, but like the way you get a government backed loan is to personally guarantee it. So it doesn't matter what happens to that corporate entity. If it goes belly up, I'm on the hook. And the reason I brought that up is just because like, look, I'm not trying to say, oh my God, I work harder than everybody. But I had gone through a summer where I'm trying to plan a wedding for the third time. We were dealing with all sorts of insane challenges. Everyone's like, Kyle, why don't you just not go to the Hamptons and like plan your wedding? I'm like, oh, duh, because I have to film. You know, yeah. I'm like, running a company, filming two TV shows, um, trying to plan a wedding. I have enormous amounts of stress. And I just looked around the table. And I'm like, no, nah, I get it. No one can even remotely come close to understanding or relating. And that frustration kind of builds up. It's not like my friends are like, hey, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. They're just commenting on, you know, my relationship and providing all sorts of, you know, judgment for the camera yeah, yeah. absolutely how, how much did you personally invest in lover boy because i think that's a big part of uh, being an owner and an entrepreneur is just starting it off was it a pretty easy company to start off or was this a, a massive struggle no i mean look um you know between my two businesses that i was starting at the same time you know i personally invested almost two hundred thousand dollars Oh. And, um, you know, a lot of people think they have an idea and then they go take a PowerPoint, put it in front of their friends and their family or their, you know, the richest person they know, and they try to get an investment. And it's just like, that is such a waste of time. I've done that. Right. Mm -hmm. People want to see that you have real skin in the game and that you can actually launch something that has the potential to be successful. So I had to get Loverboy to a point where I had a brand. I had a product, I had samples, I was literally ready to go to market. And so, you know, when I, um, you know, that took about a year, alcohol is insanely challenging, right? Um, laws, regulation, you name it. Um, we have a product that is much more challenging from a distribution standpoint than like a wine or a spirit. It takes hundreds of relationships with distributors that sell my product you know, from wholesale to retail. I won't bore you with the details, but, you know, I got to, you know, the, the advice that I received was if you want to successfully launch a beverage brand, by the way, that's beverage. Alcohol, you would argue, is more complicated and more costly. Mm -hmm. You want to raise a million dollars. So I had put in the initial cash. And then once I was ready to go, right, I captured kind of the, the making of the brand, if you will, on season three. Fast forward to going into the summer of twenty. Um, 19, which was season four, 
I was ready to actually launch the thing, like a soft launch in New York, do it on camera. And, you know, I was able to convince, you know, my friends and family to put in just over a million to kind of take that next step and launch the company. Gotcha. Crazy, man. Wild so success I, story. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's a lot of balls to do what you're doing, you know, but you're actually doing it. And I think that's the thing that's sets you apart. It's giant action. That's why I respect how you bring lover boy on the show. You're always promoting it. Like it's a business to you and I get it. Uh, it's, it's smart. You know, you're, product placement is very hard. It's very expensive. And you're in a fortunate position that you're able to do that kind of, Hey, this, this is, this is me and you hustle it. But I think the more question is, is what's doing better is your business lover boy doing better or is uh, Luke's ring business doing better? <laughs> oh, come on. I love Luke. I actually really like Luke. I, I think he's one of those guys at first I was like, I didn't get it. And then, after I saw started seeing him on the show, I was like, oh, I like he's actually fun. He's he's fun. You know what I like about him is like he he has all these little businesses, these little revenue streams, and that's how he makes it in New York. Like it's a cliche saying, but it's you know, it's tough to make it here. Sure. Right? He coaches hockey, he models, he acts, he has a jewelry business. You know, now he just launched his maple syrup. Like he's got a cologne, he does candles. <laughs> like the the guy's hustling. And I give him a lot of credit because not many people that are given a platform like Bravo actually put in the work. What they want to do is slap their name on something and, 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 and you know, more or less uh, white label something from an existing company and think, oh, yeah, you know, I've got my own, you know, fill in the blank. And when in reality, they are just the talking head for another brand. No, I get it. And I think, and I, I give him a lot of credit because again, it, New York city is a hard place to really make it. I just like, you know, not this past season, but last season, he was always outside working and sawing away, but I just didn't know what he was actually doing. It was like, what is he doing out there? He was, just but do we, but Kyle, do we like his jewelry? Is he a oh, cool yeah. jewelry? You uh, wear any of his jewelry? Yeah. Yeah. He, he made me a ring that season five. Um, look, I think keep in mind, we were filming in a, in a COVID bubble. So season five was, you know, J July and August of 20, 2020. Um, we didn't have vaccines. I was working my butt off um, trying to get Loverboy to additional states. We'd run out of aluminum cans, all sorts of challenges. So like my Monday through Friday, despite the cameras rolling, I mean, I was just in my room at my stand up desk working, working, working. And Luke was just keeping himself occupied. I mean, he was making jewelry for people that were ordering it online. Uh, so he created like that workbench. And I, I mean, I got, it's funny because he can provide entertainment in such a different capacity that I can like him just like talking to himself and like, you know, swearing and like just doing random shit, like chopping wood is it's the fact that he can make that like, you know, something mundane into like, actually entertaining tv is like kind of a testament to who he is and we're di very different from that perspective no I, I i get it are you like are you and the guys who's closer you and all the guys or all the girls closer i mean i i think that the challenge is, you know as the show evolves right is people kind of go in different directions just like new york right like am i as close with my friends from six to seven years ago as i am now you know, now, right? Like relationships kind of evolve based on where your personal, professional, and like relationships kind of bring you. I, I would say on our show, um, you know, certainly some of the OGs are, are closer just naturally. You know, we've been through a lot together. Um, you know, the show's kind of been on our back for quite some time. And, you know, we're kind of, um, you know, we've kind of all taken turns taking a beating right? Like there's been plenty of people that have come on the show that haven't necessarily received the heat, like have been in the hot seat, you know, and some people that might've been season six, right? We're like, Hey, welcome. You know, you've been here for a while. You haven't really taken any shit and it's not easy. And I think that, I think some of the, you know, the, the newcomers to the mix are starting to appreciate that. It's not, it's not easy kind of putting it all out there and being vulnerable and wearing your heart on your sleeve. Well, how, how long, how long do you want to stay on this show? 
Like, is this uh, this is the long term? This is like I'm having fun and seeing where it goes. Like, I'm always just curious to see like what people say to that question. Yeah, you know, I think our show's kind of gone through a couple different phases, if you will. Um, certainly, like season three being notable. Season five was just kind of uh, you know a slightly different concept because we filmed in the Hamptons permanently, like I said, in lockdown Mm -hmm. season six kind of returned to our roots from a party standpoint, but people were clearly in different places than, you know, than prior seasons. I, on a personal level, think that I can keep doing this. If it's rewarding, if it feels natural, if it feels like this is what I would want to be doing with or without the cameras, right? Mm -hmm. The second, it starts to feel like a job for me. And I, I know others look at it differently, but like I've been giving up my summer for six years now. And yeah, you know, we get to go to vineyards and throw parties and go out to dinner, but like I've missed birthdays, family reunions, bachelorette parties, weddings, you name it. So the second it starts to feel like a chore, that's when it's got to, I, I got to kind of like check myself. Makes yeah. sense. Makes sense. Well, let me ask this. So are you guys filming from Memorial Day to Labor Day? Or how does it work usually when you guys film on a normal season? Sure. Like that's how New Yorkers look at the summer. Yeah. You know, we've never needed all 15 weekends. And yes, there's 15 weekends. Um, that's the magic number from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Um, we have typically filmed like 10 to 11 weekends of that 15 week summer. Um, it just kind of depends on how, you know, where July 4th fits in. That's usually like the kickoff. It's either that weekend or the weekend before. And are you guys allowed to use the house during the week or is it like, cause why is, I would just, especially working from home. Why don't you guys stay there during the week? No, totally. I mean, ironically, you know, even before we started doing this on camera, I mean, we'd rent houses and for the most part, they sit empty because we go back to the city to our respective jobs. Now, obviously very few people have, you know, nine to fives on this show. So yes, could we in theory stay out there a hundred percent? Um, I think the producers love the fact that there's an opportunity to kind of mix it up, show some of the city life. I I think that was missing from season five. Obviously I think it kind of rounds out the show, helps split it up. Um, you know, and, uh, candidly gives us a little break from one another so if if you guys went to them and said the bravos like hey guys we don't like maybe just you and and amanda don't feel like going back to city like can we stay in the house would they allow you to stay in the house without production it's it's a little bit of a liability just because there's ridiculous amounts of equipment there there's security um you know it's i think it's kind of just been um assumed that when you leave you leave um yeah because yeah, i just you know it's it's a nice house and then factor in you know the fact that people probably know where we live and uh there's security and there's camera equipment you know <laughs> well let me ask you this when you guys go to the house every weekend do you guys like have your own cars or do they give you cars to rent or how do you guys get out there how does bravo provide you the service car service or rental cars yeah so so some people use uh, rental cars provided by the company. And uh, I, I've had a car for several years now. Um, ironically, and it's almost just hysterically season one, we all had to get out there by like any means necessary. It was like on us. And the, the funny thing is like back then I was cheap as, you know, and broke and, you know, putting all my money into my startup. So we would take the train or like Carl would take his company car, which like, Season one, episode one, his car is like Chevy Equinox was like front and center and he immediately got fired. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, the funny thing is those commutes can take three, four hours if you if you time it wrong. Yeah. And we would kind of hash out everything that happened the prior weekend, talk about our work week. And by the time we get to the to the house season one, we were just ready to party. And the producer's like, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa what happened to you, you know, kind of being at odds with one another about, you know, such and such. We're like, no, we're good. We resolved that. And they're like, oh, shit. 
<laughs> yeah, so like season one was super disjointed. I mean, obviously any season one show is going to go through, you know, um, you know, some challenges just because our show was a, a truly like a new concept. I mean, Bravo had never, never done like 24 seven surveillance like Summer House. And um, the beauty of once you're at the house is nothing goes missed. But with us all going back to our respective apartments, respective jobs, but then having opportunities in the city to catch up off, off camera, we didn't realize that we were almost doing ourselves in the show with this service. So yeah. I, I want I want to get into yours and Amanda's relationship, but I want to ask a question that I've been thinking about for a long time. And this is the first opportunity that I'm having to ask you when you proposed on the boat and it was windy as fuck. Was that a real ring that you had in your hand or were you afraid that that ring was going to go flying out of your hand and be gone forever? No, I ironically, I was not afraid of dropping it. I was just afraid that I got the wrong size, which I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, Amanda, she didn't like, like I didn't know her ring size and I didn't want to ask. And so I was trying to take some of her rings and like you, you, you lay it on top of like something you print out from the web where you try to like match a ring size. And like, I was matching like the wrong finger and like, sure enough, it was like too big. <laughs> like that was as far as the ring concerned, like that was my biggest fear. And of course it was true. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was just a wild, wild way to propose just because we had such a crazy summer and she had no idea it was coming. And that's, that's, yeah. That's why I didn't want to do anything suspicious around like the ring size. So, so then she says yes. And then I got to imagine Bravo's like, yes, cha-ching. Do <laughs> they help pay for a wedding? Because this, I mean, two of their stars are getting together. Like, is this, is this something they go, we'll chip in on? I mean, look, um, I would love to say yes, but I mean, maybe I should have just negotiated it harder, but we also wanted to have control. Like the second Bravo's paying for your wedding, guess what? It's a Bravo production. So we were adamant that, um, look, we will give you access. We will let you film, but you need to be flies on the wall. And really the only way to guarantee that was we covered every single penny. We didn't get a single dollar from Bravo. Um, in, in, in fact, it probably cost us more money. <laughs> to, to, to do the damn thing because just of some of the challenges but then do you get say so on what gets aired like if there's a moment now that you've paid for the whole thing and they're there is the ball in your court and like hey that moment was kind of intimate i don't want that aired out for the world or it is what it is and it's just like any part of the reality show yeah you know we have zero say as to like what winds up in the final mm -hmm. edit you know, obviously a show like ours, there's just so much footage. I mean, you think about there's like God knows how many cameras in the house. Um, I mean, we only really like get the episode a couple of days before it airs. I, like, I just meant that episode in particular or that like moment in time in particular. Like if you got to say so on just the wedding, but interesting. OK, that's right. Yeah. No, I mean, like, very look, curious I, about I, that. I would have loved more coverage of it just because we went through i mean god like our original wedding venue we were supposed to get married may of 2020 mm -hmm. um they backed out because they actually had like a liquor permit issue and they're like oh yeah we we actually we didn't realize that we can't s sign the release so like we had gone on like this nine month venue search we'd finally signed in like um spring of 19 for for a spring 2020 wedding and um they backed out. And that's why, like, we went into season four. Everyone's like, "Do you have a wedding venue?" And we're like, "No." Can we talk about it? Like, as to why? No, because it was kind of fourth wally. Yeah. Did uh, you uh, did you have a bachelor party though? I did. It was just like with my business and like all the delays and challenges with COVID. It was honestly not even something on my mind. <laughs> yeah. I know. I I, might, I probably like look like the guy that would love like the most insane bachelor party of all time. But, uh, you know, it just wasn't, wasn't high up on the priority list. So tell us something that you've learned from the first year of marriage that you would pass on to other people. 
I think, I mean, look, we, we had a tough summer just because we just had so much going on, um, you know, leading up. And, you know, I, I think what we've learned, you know, after the fact is that as, as simple as it sounds, I mean, like respecting one another and being patient with one another is the key and, and just focusing on communicating and, and, you know, it, it, it's tough. Like I, I don't think people recognize like putting your relationship out there and I mean, everyone's like, Oh my God, I'm so sick of hearing about Kyle and Amanda's wedding. I'm like, well, I mean, what do you want from us? Like, like we had a stressful summer and there are times when the drama in our life is like front and center at, at the summer house. And by the way, that is not my choice, right? Like, I wish other shit was going down that was more interesting. Um, yeah. You know, I, I'm so tired of being like under the microscope, but like, I think that now that we're through that, it's just like, we can take a, take a breath and, and, and this huge like sigh of relief just because, um, you know, we don't have to like let the universe keep asking. Like if it's like, guys, we got married despite what you see, we're happy. And, um, it's just like this huge weight is off our shoulders and like, we're just kind of like soaking it in. <laughs> Did you, were you guys, Dax isn't really familiar with the Hamptons. He Dax is like, Oh, I want to see what the Hamptons is like. I'm from Jersey. So for me, it's like, I can't afford the Hamptons. I'm going to be honest with you. So <laughs> but when you go out to the Hamptons, are you guys not allowed to film or a lot? Are the bars cool to you guys? Are you not allowed to film there? How, what's the, the vibe like? Yeah. I mean, like the town, I mean, towns, right? Long, like the Hamptons is this huge, like hour and a half long stretch of, of Long Island. Um, they've always been very welcoming and, and, you know, sure. You can like, uh, read up on various challenges we've had. Um, and that, that's usually just like isolated instances. Like, yeah, when we first came in, like people, I mean, speaking of Jersey, they thought like, it'd be like the next Jersey shore. And, um, you know, look, we're, we might be kind of wild and crazy and dramatic, but uh, we've always been respectful and businesses open up their doors to us. Um, I mean, sometimes we can't just do whatever we want because of things like uh, filming permits, capacity, most recently, like, you know, COVID restrictions, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I feel like we've been very lucky just because the Hamptons is pretty s stuffy. And, you know, people are like, you know, we're good. I think people know what the Hamptons is all about. We don't need like more publicity. <laughs> so do you and Amanda want kids? Yeah. Yeah. Now I think it's go ahead. I think, um, I mean, very early on, um, I say early on, I mean, it was Valentine's day of 2018, the year I proposed and we sat down and I was like, all right, let's, let's just talk. Like, what do you want? You know, you want kids. We I already knew she wanted kids, but it's like, how many went? She's like, I'd love to be like married and like thinking about kids by the time I'm 30. I was like, okay. And I just do the math. I was like going back and I'm like, all right, well, I mean, that means I got to propose. We don't want a shotgun wedding. So there's going to be some downtime, some wedding planning. I'm like, man, I actually, that could kind of sneak up. And so like, it was February to, to Labor Day, you know, that I ended up proposing. Um, so I've always wanted kids. I'm sure she wants like three or four. I'm like two to three. But it's it's daunting because you want to provide and for, you know, an amazing life and, and, and feel like you can support a family. And as an entrepreneur, that's like a daunting task just because you just, you never know. Well, I look at it as you're on a a reality show that is about craziness and over the top and all this kind of stuff. And I feel like having children would make that, that job for you difficult. Do you <laughs> feel that there is pressure with like, I want to be good on TV, but I also want a family. Like where is the middle for you guys and how do you navigate through that? Yeah. I mean, look, fortunately Amanda's nine years younger than me. So it's not like there's like a ticking clock, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're, pretty you know lucky there um uh, i think that like 
that's the natural like next chapter for us. I, I think forcing, you know, some iteration of summer house where like a man is pregnant or like we have a toddler or an infant is just like, I mean, come on, that's just, that's, just, that's a stretch. <laughs> yeah. But can, can you imagine like at summer house and you're like trying to get the baby to be like, shut up guys, the baby's yeah. sleeping. Like, the so baby's bad. got like a little mini <laughs> mullet on. <laughs> yeah. That'd be great. Has there been talks of you guys doing a spinoff? Um, not really. I mean, like when our relationship was a, a lot more stable, like, you know, someone had floated around the idea of like a wedding special. And that's when we were just like, that's a lot of pressure. Like we don't need our, our wedding to pri- provide like an entertainment value for a TV show. Um, Winter house, you know, was an idea of mine going way, way back. And it was actually COVID that helped bring that to fruition. I don't get like a producer credit, but like I incubated that. And like, I'd been doing that with friends. I called it Stow Palooza and all the pictures that the network used to like pitch the show was all from me. Um, So like, that was the closest thing to like a spinoff, but you know, I, I, look, I, I mean, I'm in a hotel room right now because I just filmed something entirely new, entirely different. And I'm never, it's not, I never thought I'd wind up on TV, but it's a fascinating industry. It's a surreal experience. When opportunities come knocking, you say yes. Even if you don't have the time, I sure as heck should not be here. Um, You know, um, talking to you guys, quite frankly, but it's (laughs) it's like, you know, you don't know how long this is going to last. You don't know when your 15 minutes is up. So we, uh, you know, I'll entertain. You shouldn't be talking to us either way. Just letting you know that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> how do you get invited to one of your pool parties, dude? Like, who are these people? Are these Do you guys know these people that show up at the house? How does that work? I, I saw a couple questions like this floating around on the internet. And I'm like, have you guys just forgotten how real parties work? It's not like when you throw a party with like 100 people, are you on like a first name basis with every guest? Hell no. Like, friends bring friends. Our parties are literally no different. Like, I've been to so many parties in the Hamptons before I started filming where I'm like, do I know the host? Hell no. Am I going to drink their alcohol and and party and have fun and go down the water slide? Hell yeah. (laughs) Um, And like, that's kind of how our parties uh, have, I mean, initially, I mean, the the hilarious part is like the first two seasons, our friends were too scared to be in the background because they all have like legitimate jobs in finance or (laughs) PR or marketing. (laughs) New York's like the anti LA, right? Like in LA, everyone wants to be on TV. In New York, all of our friends are like, do you have like a no film zone? Yeah. We're going to stay way back with, and you know what? With all the themes that you guys have at the parties, is this all your guys' ideas? Do the producers chime in on like, hey, let's do this theme. This would be really fun just to like amp it up a notch. I mean, like early on, it was all us. But I mean, you know, you start to run out of like your go to themes. So it's a bit of a collaboration, a little bit of a brainstorm. And candidly, you know, some of these parties are logistically challenging. So we get a little help. But I mean, we're setting up. Actually, I love the fact I think it was Carl that showed a little behind the scenes, Carl or Lindsay. Like, I think a lot of people think that we like, you know, the crew just comes in and sets it all up for us. And it's like turnkey. It's like, dude, we set it up, we take it down. Like we are just doing what but anyone who, would be who doing. pays who pays for the booze at Summer House? Is it you guys or is it Bravo? Lover boy. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> literally kind of the genesis of all this. Like Bravo, I mean, it goes back to your wedding question about like, did they pay for anything? When, when we started this, if you think about the dynamics of a house, like there's going to be discussions, possible arguments over like the budget. Like that's food, that's groceries. Who's doing the shopping, alcohol. Like, should we charge a cover? Like, how do we cover the expenses? Like they want to follow all that. And so we're like, uh, we're a connected cast. So early on, like, you know, Christina, sorry, I keep hitting the fucking table I'm on. Um, Early on, Christina had a connection to Whispering Angel. I had a connection to Boston Beer, which had Truly and and Twisted. Like, we're like, yo, kind of, you want to, drop some product off we'll bring it through the back door you know hopefully the producers like you know 
turn their turn their turn turn their head because like, <laughs> you're probably not supposed to do that. But we're resourceful. But that's when I was like, dude, like, what if we were just drinking my product, right? Like, my friends aren't going to complain because they had to pay for it in the first place. Um, and if I can make it taste good and it's better for you, it's a win win win. Okay, fine. Booze. Who's paying for the food? Food shopping, groceries. Us, yeah, we do. We do fresh direct, which is like the the grocery delivery service. But that out. that is literally coming out of your pocket. Yeah. Oh my god, it's kind of wild. Bravo has the best gig ever. Like he, <laughs> they're paying for their own booze, paying for their own food, and we just get to film it. This is amazing. Why did you... I not be a producer for this show? Yeah, I mean, look, like, but that's the beauty of our show, like the authenticity, right? Like, like if all this stuff was just figured out for us and paid for um, and then there wasn't surveillance and it was just from scene to scene to scene, like you'd lose some of that, that charm. Yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah, but you know what's so funny to boycott for you guys? You should go one weekend and just be malnourished and like dehydrated. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually make great to be like naked and afraid on Bravo. Yeah. You'd just be crawling around <laughs> hungry, like, fighting with each other what about i mean it sounds crazy it's a listen you're at a party it's the hamptons what about i mean now it's sort of legal but like can you smoke weed on the show or what can you do can you do any of that i mean i I, i'm not a big thc guy but i'm sure people are finding ways to to dabble (laughs) (laughs) i mean it's legal in new york it's not really something that's that's spoken about but um but yeah, I mean, who the hell knows? What was right, the craziest get... thing that happened at a party that never made the show? I mean, we've had entire parties not make it because, like, you know, there's only so much footage that they can cram into an hour in a season. Um, I mean, we had an anything but clothes party um, this past summer that was hysterical. I, I had taken all my mullets over the years and just covered um, – you know, my business. And that was my outfit. Um, and, uh, I mean, you know, if, if it's a fun party, but there's no drama, uh, if, if not, nothing really like evolves from like a story perspective and people, you know, just kind of show up and have a good time. Hey, that's great. Does it make great TV? Not always. Um, cause you know, that that's just the nature of this business. You're, you're going to wind up with some footage that just doesn't make the cut. But how many people are just they want to get naked because they're like, if I get crazy, it'll make the show. Like, is there any of that that you can tell people are just going over the top because they're like they just want to be on TV at the end of the day? We certainly have guests. And by the way, Adam, to answer your earlier question, yes, you can come to one of our pool parties. Yes, baby. <laughs> that's my dream. I don't know. It's if all you about who you know. It's 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 literally just like the Hamptons. Um, people come in, and I, I think a lot of people don't understand how TV goes down until they see it and then they watch it. Right. Like a a big party that goes on for hours and hours and hours might be like 10 minutes of television. And, you know, the producers can really just focus in on what they want to focus in on. And all the stuff in the peripheral is just there to kind of like, (laughs) it's just like surroundings. Right. Um, and so a lot of people come in, do like something extravagant or like outlandish, doesn't make the cut. And they're like, wow, like I, I was in it for a split second on surveillance, walking through like a sliding door. That was like their, <laughs> their, their summer house cameo. Do you, funny. Is, is everyone, so you're going to do this summer, correct? You're going to film this summer? Well, I just opened up my phone, having been off the grid for a couple of weeks, and they've announced that Summer House Season 7 is confirmed. So I guess things are looking good. Wait, congratulations. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> but is everyone going to be – like, here's the thing. I wa- As a fan of the show, you know, I watched this past season. Is it weird when someone doesn't get asked back? And how do you guys deal with that? Yeah. I mean, look, it, it's obviously the – unfortunate side of like filming with friends particularly those early seasons where we had no idea what we were doing and like the season two renewal came around like a handful of my friends didn't get asked back and that same thing happened the year before granted there was like a little bit of a falling out but 
I mean, yeah, it sucks. Cause like, you know, everyone's trying to do their part, contribute, you know, um, show up and have fun and be themselves. And like, it's, it's obviously not a perfect fit for everybody. And sometimes the producers don't know it until they, you know, stick someone into that situation and, and see how things unfold. Like we always have some type of connection to the cast members that, that have come on in these later seasons. Um, you know, and just like any summer house, it's not like you have to be besties with someone for them to wind up in your house. It could be a friend of a friend who's in the right time, you know, right place, right time. Do you have any say, uh, or can you recommend people? Do they ever hit you up and say, Hey, do you know anybody who'd be good for the show? Do you oh, every single year. Yeah. That's like part of the casting process. They, they always try to, I mean, look, just like a normal house, like we, um, we want to bring in people that we have some type of friendship or connection with. Um, like that, that first season, I mean, I literally knew everybody, but Stephen McGee, but Stephen was friends with Lindsay. So, I mean, like that was like the true definition. Yeah. I mean, we called it, we called it a share house back in the day when the show got called summer house, but like that's you, you, you like buy a share in a house. Um, it, you know, and you basically figure out how many shares to offer up based on how much it's going to cost, et cetera, et cetera. Do you ever run into Hannah still? I'm not like literally never bumped into her. Never um, bumped into her. Is her? She wasn't at your wedding, correct? No. No. <laughs> so is it awkward, like a man, to have any relationship with her? No. I mean, look, it, it's unfortunate. Like when someone. You know, look, I actually ended the summer, you know, where I thought I thought we were actually in a good place. Season five, when when the cameras went down and, you know, she had, uh, you know, a tough summer. And I think she was when, when things started to air, that's when things started to spiral. And I, I think she thought we were all like plotting against her. I mean, she went on like dozens of podcasts and said just that, that that we were like there was like this group mentality and we were all up against it. i'm like hannah we were all dealing with our own lives our own sources of stress like she just got in her own head and it's it's kind of unfortunate i really liked hannah but like things went to a very dark place and um i hope you know over time you know i i, I just hate to have a falling out with anybody in my life this was basically the only, it's like the second time it's ever happened to me. The first time, ironically, was after the season two reunion. And so like going into that season five reunion, I was just like, dude, this is going to be horrible. Because she was just on this podcast crusade talking so much shit. And I, I mean, I didn't even know how to respond. So I just let her keep going. And it just, she was like her own worst enemy. Here's what I heard. And again, this is just alleged and just this is what I heard that you got upset at her because she was drinking another seltzer alcohol drink. Was there any truth to that? Uh, that has is that nothing that, that has nothing to do with like the drama that the people observed both on the show and in her podcast and on the reunion. Um, were there times where she would do a paid post for yes. the company? that was like purposely working with her to kind of like take advantage of, of like our demo. Yeah, absolutely. Do I think that's completely disrespectful for like a friend to do a paid post of a competitor? Yeah. Was that like a huge beef between us? No, that was quite frankly, like a blip on the radar in, in comparison to the other stuff. Yeah. Like I would never, ever, I don't care how close or how, you know, distant, you know, from a relationship standpoint, if I'm doing something, if I'm spending a summer with someone, if I'm filming a show, if I'm like, you know, uh, you know, part of an, like an ensemble cast, would I like, of, of all the various paid post opportunities, would I start posting about literal direct competitors of, you know, my friend's company? I mean, Give me a break. Yeah. yeah. Is there is there any awkwardness or beef right now? Because we saw the reunion. Is there any awkwardness between the girls with Hubs and Danielle, Lindsay and Danielle, and Paige and Sierra? Or like, is it two kind of sides with the girls? 
you know, it's actually a very similar situation from my perspective with, with me and Hannah. Like, we were good when the summer ended and then things spiraled when, when stuff aired. And people are just, in my opinion, all of them are being very defensive. They want to have the last word. They're not acting like friends. That doesn't work for our show. So I, I'm a little scared about what, you know, is in store for summer based. I mean, like I said, I've been off the grid for two weeks. I open up my computer and it's like, Oh, this doesn't look good. Like, <laughs> I haven't seen the reunion. I was there. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like, why are you and Amanda like sticking up for the, for Paige and Sierra and like talking to Lindsay, like the way we were. And I'm like, because nothing was resolved. And I found myself just trying to facilitate the conversation because people that I thought had a lot to say were very quiet. And yeah. it was just, it was, I got more resolution from season five reunion than, than, than this, which is not good. Yeah. Right. And I was, it wasn't even really pertaining to me. I mean, I was like fighting other people's battles because I was just like, y'all have some stuff that, needs to be resolved and this is the best stage to do it on why aren't we having those conversations so yeah. currently there's tension between the girls i mean you tell me i mean i'm just going off of what i see i'm not in direct contact with anybody because i've i've been in the uk <laughs> yeah, no I, I i get it it's when you go on the reunions are you kind of like have ammo like i feel like there's always drama on the reunions are you like do you come in prepared like, okay, I'm going to go in at Luke or I'm going to go in at Lindsay? Like, what is your – I'm sure – look, I'm sure other people on my show have strategies and I'm sure it certainly happens particularly on like Housewives where a lot of this stuff just feels premeditated. But um, I've never had a strategy. I think it makes me think of Watch What Happens Live, right? Like that show flies by in like five minutes. Like you need to be concise and you never know what questions Annie's going to ask. You know, they're going to be tough questions, but you can't prepare for them. So I, I never literally thought for a minute about what am I going to try to cover today? Cause I feel like if you go in scripted, the entire world's going to know. Yeah. It, you see right through it. All right, Kyle, my last question for you. Now that you are a married man, are you allowed to look at Lindsay's boobs? Cause those things are always out. I mean, this show has had a lot of boobs hanging out over the years. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, no, I, um, you know, it's actually, I was going to say it's, it, we have a, a brotherly sisterly relationship, but that sounds even weirder because we're talking yeah, about that, that, boobs. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> <laughs> the, the funny thing is our season finale, we always used to just jump in the pool ass naked, like everybody you know, would be naked over the years for whatever reason, we've gotten a little more conservative, but, um, but yeah, the tits are always hanging out at, at the summer house. You know, I won't, you know, Lindsay and Carl obviously together now, do you think it's to the point where like, you've known Carl, you've known Lindsay forever. Carl's one of your best friends. Do you think they're, they're walking down the aisle? This is like, this I, is it. I think they've got a great shot. I mean, look like they've, their relationship you know, is built on like years of friendship, trust. They've already had some challenges. We all know what happened, you know, season four. I kind of blew the lid off that one, um, you know, but, um, but yeah, I mean, look, I think that they, everyone's kind of seeing their relationship through Instagram right now and they're just loving and supportive. You know, I'm assuming we're filming together this summer and I think people get a chance to, to have an even like more in depth look at, at like the chemistry, their love for one another. Um, I mean, I'm, it's like one of those thick situations where I, it just caught me by surprise, blew me away, but at the same time made perfect sense. You know, how much do you love peeing in the wind? <laughs> I love peeing in the wind. <laughs> Guys are blessed with being able to like take a leak just about anywhere. So good man. And I've I've just made that my thing on a third show. So um <laughs> that should be the next t-shirt, you know. It, I think that's what it is. Peen in the wind. Lover boy. Peen in the wind. Actually, I'll give you credit, dude. 
and, and I'm sure the lover boy merch that you guys put out is actually cool. Yeah, it's all Amanda. I mean, most particularly in alcohol, most merch that that these brands come out with, they they literally have to give it away, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we we sell out. It's just mind boggling. Amanda just crushes it every time. That's my girl. It's so it. good, man. Well, dude. I, I, you, I, I've been trying to get you on the podcast forever. You finally delivered. You, 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 you've met, I've got, I got a fanboy out, dude. We've had a lot of people on this podcast, but I'm, and I don't even watch, you're the only show I watch on TV. And now I'm going to, I'm going to, I have, there's a lot of celebrities I know who like, it's weird. They, they love your show. Um, you know, like, I love, I love to hear that. I feel like it's like this little hidden gem, but it, I think COVID people started binging the shit out of it, you know? And I think, I think the beauty of it, I know I've said it before, but like the realness of the reality, like there, there's something to be said about the drama happens under one roof. The, the cameras roll 24 seven. It'd be mentally exhausting to come in and pick your, you know, your words wisely. Um, factor in alcohol is never happening in the first place. So <laughs> Who's who's the coolest celebrity that's been in your DMs saying like I, I love what you're doing I'm a fan of the show. Oh boy, um, I mean, I know she's gone sober now, and and I totally respect it. Um, but Chrissy T and I know was like a big fan, and we during like the pandemic, she would like shoot me like a, a voice note because she's like I I hate you know, typing, like I, I love voice memos on, on the Instagram app. So I was just like listening and, and exchanging, you know, voice memos with Chrissy Teigen. That's I'd say like, that was like a highlight. That's I'm, awesome. I'm a big fan of hers. I just love her, her look at life. She's just such a, like a free, happy spirit. And John Legend is the legend. I mean, like I'm, just, <laughs> I'm a huge music guy and uh, I've just always been a, a fan of his music. Yeah, I know um, my buddy Noah Syndergaard, who's a friend of yours. That, you know, I know you know him. We, me and him, we bond over your show. So yeah, uh, it's great. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, guys. Make sure you try Lover Boy Strawberry Lemonade is my favorite flavor. It's uh, it's great if you're into the hard alcohol, the uh, the seltzers and stuff, and that you got to try Lover Boy. It's uh, and it's coming. I mean, it's it's yeah. We're in like forty states now with our teas, and you can buy our spritz and our cocktails online direct to consumer. It's great, dude. Man, Kyle, thank you so much, man. As a fan and as a, as a friend, it's it's good to have you on, my friend. No, I'm, I, like I said, thank you guys for having me. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry it took so long. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you the pass this time, except we do expect that invite to the party. You can't just take Adam. You have to take me as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you got it. You Kyle, got I'm, it. I'm going to be so creepy at these parties. And they're not going to be <laughs> I'm just gonna be like fanboying, but the thing is, the whole entire time I'm gonna make eye contact with the camera. But like, can you tell that guy not to look at the camera? <laughs> Dude, the, what's going on. We, we've had some funny guests over the years. My buddy tried to bring in like a Russian oligarch last summer, um, obviously before the current situation, and um, he was like, "Oh, I gotta sign a release." He's like, "Ah, can't go. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna happen." I get it. I love it. Well, uh, follow, follow Kyle on Instagram. He's a great follow. It's under I am uh, Kyle Cook. That's where you can follow him. But lots of good photos. You have one of the best accounts out there. So keep crushing it, man. Hey, thanks so much, guys. Dax, you Dude, understand. Your boner is visible through the Zoom. Yeah, yeah. Is it? Can you see me? <laughs> I love Kyle. I think it's so funny. I think, I, I like, my questions were probably a little too inside baseball. Like, I'm curious about like just like how they get to the Hamptons every weekend. Cause you don't understand Dex. The Hamptons is kind of far to go there every yeah. weekend. Like you have to beat traffic. It's very, it's not fun to go there every weekend, but I don't know. I'm like such a fan. I could have talked to him forever. Cause I asked so many random stupid questions for now. I, I listen, I, you know, I, I thought it was interesting. I think his answers are interesting. Um, I, I, I think he was great. I think he was fun. I think he was honest. And you know me, that's all I asked for in one of our guests. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you guys for listening. Leave a review, five star only. Uh, just say a few kind words. We'll actually read your review live on air. It's the best thing to do to support this podcast. Follow us.
We're on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We're on it all. We have a private Facebook group. Tell us about Dax about this Facebook group. Yeah, so we got a private Facebook group. It's called Off the Record. It's kind of one of those spots where that's where we talk about the things that we don't talk about on the podcast. So we're giving out, like, I think the other day we posted, like, a little tidbit about Johnny Depp and uh, and his hotel. I don't want. I obviously can't talk about it on here because you got to be a part of the Facebook group to get all the little details. Uh, but we're just dropping gems in there. That's where we people can ask us questions. We'll answer, and uh, it's just a place for friends to meet friends. Really, yeah. It's uh, if you love Hollywood, it's a great Facebook group. But we have really cool, fun content on our TikTok and our Instagram. Follow the Hollywood Podcast. Uh, find me at, at Adam Glynn, G L Y N. Find Dax Holt at D A X H O L T. See you guys next time. Bye. What's up, guys? If you liked that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go.